Welcome to lecture 31, which is going to be on vision and human vision on telescopes and microscopes. So these are all applications of the simple principles of optics that we've learned in the last lecture. So what, I, what you can see in front of you here is a picture, a diagram of the human eye. I mean, it has all those different parts labeled. Most of them are not going to concern us. So the important part for us is the retina back here. Right? This is the part that actually detects light. And then we're going to worry about the lens in front. The lens is called a lens because indeed it is a lens and it bends light. And in front of the lens there's the cornea which is here. And that all also acts a bit like a lens. So those are going to be the three important, important parts. I'm going to imagine there's an object far away. Now let me get rid of all the um, those those parts that we don't care about, right? So apparently the um, simulation agrees with me that the retina and the lens are the most important parts. Now what it doesn't show you here is that the cornea itself is a little bit of a lens too, and it does bend the light, but it's it's it can't really change its shape very much, so it just does the same thing. It's not really that, really that important. What we worry about is, is the lens right here. Now let's imagine when we look at an object. Here's my object. Here it's just the point. And the object might be, might be somewhere here. Now, you can tell that those, those light rays, the lens, right, it's a convex lens, but it, it bends the light rays, but the light doesn't get focused on the retina. In that case, we'd see it blurry. So what we do is we can change in our eye the thickness of the lens with those muscles above and below. So think of this as bringing it into focus and now the lens is becoming thicker until it's about here and now I can see okay those light rays to get focused on a point so they form a sharp image on our retina. So this point here would get um, detected right there as a sharp sharp image. If you've got an extended object, it might have another point down here, well that would then appear up here. But if you do this um, and you understand convex lenses, you know that any image forming on the other side is going to be upside down. Because a point that would be below the object is going to have the light rays meet up here. Um, so why do we not see everything upside down? I mean, we do. It's just your brain is used to it, right? Upside, seeing things the way we see things is how your brain interprets them. If that makes sense. All right. So if the object moves further away, right, the rays as they reach the lens, they move they're closer to parallel than when, like here, the angles here are much greater than the object is far away. So to focus them at this point, we're going to need a um, somewhat weaker lens. So lens is becoming thinner. You can tell right now the point isn't quite on the retina yet, but but now it is. In fact, if the object were infinitely far away, our, our lens would have to be just very, very thin. Um, so it just bends the light enough that, that you can see um, a focused object due to the light uh, meeting, meeting right here at that point on your retina. Okay. And that is normal vision, right? And as the object gets closer, I'd have to make the lens thicker because those light rays, they come in at a greater angle, so it has to be bent more to again meet there. Now, this is where if you've got normal vision. Now, if you have, say you are, you are um, nearsighted. So right now, does, I look at an object that's fairly close and I'm, I'm nearsighted. Well, I can, I can bring it into focus and I'm doing just fine. Right, I adjusted my lens, my brain knows how to do that, to see this object clearly right there. Now if I want to look at a object that's really far away though, right, I can make my lens thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, but I can't quite get it thin enough. Right? I'm unable to let my lens be thin enough to focus those light rays right here. Right? That is the problem when you're near sight. Now how do we fix that? You put a lens in front of it. Those are your glasses. Um, put in front of your eye. And if I want, 
so the problem right now is right that my, my my lens is too strong it can't cope with no matter what i do it can't cope with those sort of light rays it bends them too much so what i do is i compensate by having the light rays spread out more so I, essentially i bring the image of the object the image of the object would be somewhere here right those rays up here that actually meet the lens of the eye they appear to be coming from here so i've got an image of the object that's a lot closer so my eye can focus on it just fine and i've got this um this uh, comparison here in a different diagram there you can see light from far away straight lines it meets in the wrong spot my lens doesn't is unable to become thin enough well i can fix this by pretending the light from far away actually came from a point over here i think you can see it better in this the simulation all right if you are far sighted on the other hand right so far sighted means that you have a difficult time looking at things that are close to you so right now the object is far away and i've got a very easy time to focus it um, on my retina but now i bring in the object closer and like fairly close, so you're trying to read something right close to your eye. Now I want to make the lens thicker to bend those rays more, so I do this. And look, I can do it. I'm just fine. But wait a minute, what if the object is even closer? Okay, now I can't. Right, this is too close for me to focus on. No matter what I do, the light from this point here ends up spread out on my retina. It's blurry. Right. My lens is unable to become thick enough to cause those rays here to bend enough to actually meet in the point. So I have to add glasses. And if you're far-sighted, hyperopic, you're going to need a, a convex lens. Right. So if you compare the glasses of someone with myopia, short-sightedness and hyperopia far-sightedness then the myopic ones they'll be a con diverging lens a concave lens whereas the far-sighted one the um, hyperopic one will be a um, convex lens like this so then you can make it work you just this lens helps the existing lens to bend the light it pre-bends the light a little bit so one consequence of this is if you look at somebody's eyes right and they put glasses on and you can see the eyes there they look larger that's probably because they've got one of those because remember a um a convex lens acts like a magnifying glass for objects that are very close behind it so you sort of look into their eyes using their glasses as a magnifying glass whereas they look through the glasses close to their face um, to allow them to since you focus on very close objects. Of course, then you have the, the combination um, where you're going to need bifocals because if it's very far, you can't quite make it work. If it's very close, you can't quite make it work. So you can use different part of, you can use a, a lens that is essentially um, converging on one end and diverging on the other. And usually when I have the converging one at the top, the diverging one, sorry, the converging one at the bottom, the diverging one at the top, so that if you look if you look in dis, um, great distances, right, you look to the top of the lens, when you want to read something in front of you, you look to the bottom of the lens, because chances are you're holding your book or whatever kind of slightly below your face. Um, all right, so that is vision, right? It's just an application of the simple lenses um, that we that we know about. Okay, so we talked about vision, I had to take this one here off. Now we're going to talk about telescopes. So let's imagine you want to look at a very distant object. That's what we use telescopes for. And telescopes, microscopes, they're both for magnification, but of very different types of things. One of things very far away, one of tiny things, but things that are close. So they're different. Let's imagine we look at some very distant object, say a star, right? Look at a star in the sky and 
the star is huge, right, but it appears very small. Because it's so far away, it makes a very small angle in the sky. So imagine you look at the star, and the star, you look at the bottom end of the star in your field of vision, the top end of the star. Now, they're going to make an angle of those two rays. It's going to be utterly tiny, way smaller than I could possibly draw it here. Right. But, but this, um, this tiny, tiny angle, right, we might call this the, the angle that the star um, makes in this makes in your field of vision. That's what this angle is. It's colored in so you can see it, right? It's this tiny angle there. Now we want to make this angle bigger. That's our goal. So here's how we do this. So you can't use, you might think, hey, can we just use a, you know, a convex lens, a converging lens? Doesn't that act like a magnifying glass? The answer is yes, it does, but only if the object you're looking at is inside the focal range. And sorry, the star is, you know, light years and light years away. So that's not going to work. So here's what we do. We're going to use um, converging lenses and we're going to use more than one. So let me draw a long center line as much as far as I, I can draw it. Here. And we're going to assume the light comes in just like that. But then we let the light fall through a, through a lens. So I'm going to draw a lens here. And the first lens is called the objective lens. Right, objective lens is just the name for it. And the light rays, they essentially come in. Like they're, they're so far away that I'm gonna I'm gonna assume the bottom of the star, right, um, comes in comes in like on the line. And then the light rays from the top of the star, remember the light rays, right, they, they go in all sorts of directions from each object, from each point on the object, right? So I'm really just going to trace this top line. I'm not going to retrace the middle line, the, the central line, and the central line just goes through. So I imagine that this, the light from the star comes in at some angle like this. And those are all the rays that come from the same point on the star. They all come from the top of the star. But it's hard to draw the scale. I, I only drew one of those rays here. I could have drawn lots and they would all be parallel. Right? And all those rays come from a single point. The top end of the star, the bottom end of the star is, is where this line is. Of course, those angles are way smaller than I can draw them. So parallel rays. What happens to parallel rays? Well, they meet at the focal point. Let's say, let's say the focal point is, um, is over here. I hope my diagram will work out if I put it there. Parallel rays meet at the focal point if the rays come in parallel, not just to each other, but to the central line. In this case, they're at an angle. And what happens then, and we haven't really talked about this yet, um, is that they still meet in what's called a focal plane. They meet essentially above or below the focal point. Right, but still at the same distance from the lens. So all those rays are going to meet somewhere on the plane. And this is focal plane. Right there. Now, where do they meet? Well, I know that that ray that I drew at the bottom, that one goes straight through. Right, it hits the center of the lens, so it's going to go in a straight line because we understand that at least in a thin lens approximation, that's what happens. So this ray goes here, and then because they come in parallel, or for all practical purposes parallel, because they come from a single point that is hundreds of light years away perhaps, they all are going to meet um, right, right in that one point down there.
All right, fair enough. I mean, big deal. We haven't magnified anything. We simply focused light from a single point far away, light rays essentially parallel onto a point here. Yeah, on the focal plane because they come in parallel. So now what that means is the um, the image of the point far away is essentially formed, formed here. So now what we do is we have a second lens and it's called the eyepiece lens. I'm going to put it over here. You sort of tell by the way I am drawing it that it's a thicker lens. Um, you know, straight up there. Like this badly drawn doesn't matter. Remember, only the, the line actually matters. This is just for decoration. So we know what kind of lens it is. This is my eyepiece lens. And here's what we do. What's crucial is that this is the focal point for both lenses. So we put them a distance apart. That is the sum of their focal lengths. Right, so this would be um, F E for the eyepiece lens, and this would be F O for the objective lens. Right, so that is something you have to do in your telescope. If you put it in the wrong place, this is not going to work. You have to put them the right distance apart. Maybe just in case you have to make adjustments. You might, you know, have some kind of mechanism that allows you to move the lens slightly back and forth if something is out of focus. Or, for example, if the temperature of your telescope changes, well, some materials expand more than others, but they all expand um, or contract depending on does it, is it getting warmer or colder. So those lengths might change. It's going to mess with your setup. So maybe it'd be good to be able to adjust it a little bit so that the focal length of both of them is is such that their focal points um, are one and the same. Okay, so we want to figure out now, if you look through this lens, right, you see the image of the image created by this. The object is the top of the top of the star, far away. It the first lens creates the image of that top of the star right here. So now we look to the second lens, so we ask what's the image of the image? So this is the um, image of top of star. Remember, we have to pick a single point on the star. We pick the top end because the bottom end, we assume, is on the center line. So the angle that this, these lines make with the center line, that's the size of the star in our field of vision. So this is the image of top of the star. We want to find the image of the image. So, well, we know how to construct um, an image, right, from a from a con, um, convex lens. If we draw the rays, we can draw the straight through ray right here, the easy one, like this, very easy. Uh, we draw the focal ray, the focal ray is going to be, wait, if I draw the focal ray, it's going to go straight up, that's never going to meet the lens, that's useless. But it's okay because I've got a third ray available. I can draw the um, the parallel ray down here. Sorry, I'm moving the paper around so much. Draw the parallel ray right here. And then this becomes the focal ray on the other side. Got to go the focal distance is here. So this is the, the other focal point. Um, so the lines are going to go here. You notice from the geometry, this distance is the same as this distance, those two lines actually end up being parallel. But, because this distance is a lot less than this distance, the angle that those lines now make, or this angle here, I should draw, right, is a lot bigger than, than this angle here, that was the original angle. Right, so now where do we see the where do we see the image? Well, we seem to see the image, so those lines come in parallel, which means our brain says, ah, the image must be infinitely far down there, right, in a far distance down there. So we still see the star at infinity, but it makes a bigger angle in our field of vision because of this construction here.
and you look look from the side here put my my eye right here and we can see it makes a way bigger angle um, i guess my eye, my eye should be big enough to be the, this whole area right but it makes a bigger angle between the bottom of the star and the top of the star than it did originally or than it did over here before it hit any of the lenses we also see it upside down um, that's fine in fact if you wanted to flip it again you could do the same have the same um, set up a second time using four lenses in your telescope or you can do it with mirrors right you can have a similar setup with mirrors but this is the simple refracting telescope which i think is easiest to see how um, the the optical properties of the two pieces work together to to increase the angle that the object makes in your field of vision now if you want to compare this angle to this angle here let's do that well this angle here is the same as this angle here right between the middle line and this one so i want to compare this one to this one let's give those names we call this beta um, this one alpha right those are my angles well i have that the um if this is some some height where the image forms i don't know how high it is but it depends on the angle which uh, beginning and the distances let's call this h i have that um tan alpha is h over f naught right opposite over adjacent and over here i have to tan beta is h over f e right, the focal length of the eyepiece um, i can eliminate h between them so i can write that tan alpha times f um, o sorry the objective lens is equal to tan beta times f e or in other words um just to i guess include it i'm gonna stop color coding now that the ratio of the the tans of the angle um, is the equal to the ratio of those let's make the small lens approximation sorry the small angle approximation um, that will tell us that um, beta over alpha right this is how much bigger is this one compared to this the ratio of beta over alpha is it three times as big or is it five times as big or a hundred times as big um, that is going to be equal to the f o the focal length of the objective lens divided by the focal length of the eyepiece lens now here we've used the the small angle approximation The tan of an angle is roughly equal to the angle itself. Can we do this? Well, those angles are tiny, right? Because the star is very far away. There's way less than a degree, a tiny fraction of a degree. Approximation. No one is the same. Right, so this gives me the magnification. That's this angle as a multiple of this angle. It's just a ratio of those focal lengths. So what I want to do to get maximum magnification is I want to make this as long as possible and this as short as possible. Of course, there are practical limitations in many ways. If you have a lens that's too thick, right, it's not going to be a thin lens anymore. So my thin lens approximation won't work. So you can't make it as thick as you want, right? Because in this uh, in this um, construction we've assumed the thin lens approximation that's the idea behind telescopes so now let's imagine instead of wanting to look at a really far away object we want to look at another object that's really tiny but really close right so what you'd imagine you do is you take it i draw a tiny little amoeba here and you bring it as close to your eye as you can to look at it to make it big in your field of vision now the problem is if you get too close, closer than about 25 centimeters for most people, you pass what's called the near point and your eye can't focus. Your eye just can't focus on a point that's that close to your face. 
So you have to find some kind of tool, and that's where microscopes come in. So let's figure out how the microscope works. Let me draw again a diagram. Let's tell you how the microscope is set up. So here's what we do. We've got a, um, a thick lens here. And it's again all convex lenses, right? So let me, let me draw this right here. This is the line. Of course, the lens itself is just decoration. And this lens has a focal point here and here. It's a fairly strong lens. And now the object I'm looking at, the little amoeba, um, let me not use an amoeba, let me use a little arrow or something. Um, I put it just outside the focal range. So I'm going to put it somewhere over here. In reality, you want to have it as close to the focal point um, as you can. But if I draw it too close, like it'll become hard to draw the rest of the diagram. But the principle is the same. I'm going to draw it right here, fairly close to the focal point, but outside it. Right, that's important. Not on the inside, on the outside, away from the lens. Okay, so let's construct the image of this. Um, here's a parallel ray, becomes a focal ray, and then there's the straight through ray. You can see how this is really kind of hard to draw, like this. Right, in my case, they meet down here. This is where the image forms. Right? So the image of this arrow-shaped amoeba um, is upside down here. I mean, we understand what convex lenses do. Right? So this would be the, the first image. Now I put a second lens, and I'm going to take another convex lens, and I'm going to... It's a weaker lens, and I'm going to put it somewhere over here, um, such that the, so this is again called the objective lens, much like in the case of the, the telescope, um, put it over here such that the, the, the focal point of this one here is, is right there. Which means the second part of this, other focal point of course is over here, the second part of it looks almost like the second part of the telescope setup, right? In the case of the telescope, we had lines come from infinity, they met here, there, that's where the image of the point was formed, at the focal range of the, the second lens. Same thing happens here, except that to make that happen, we had to put the object just outside um, the focal length of this one. So that means the rest of the construction is kind of the same. Um, I can figure out where does this lens, the second lens, the eyepiece lens, um, create an image of the image, right? And because it's at the focal point, um, in the focal plane, it'll end up being at infinity, much like for the telescope. So. I'm going to draw it like this. This is my, my one ray. It goes straight through. It's the easy one. And then my other one is going parallel. I can't use the focal on this side because that would go straight up. It's parallel like this. And then because it's parallel, it goes to the focal point over here like this. And this falls into our eye. Right? So my eye is, is off the screen over there somewhere. Um, and my eye thinks that these two lines, those two rays, they came from really far away over here somewhere. All right, those are pretty much parallel. In fact, if the if this is exactly at the um, at the point they'll be parallel it'll be parallel and my my brain, my eye thinks that the um, the object is at infinity, which is nice, which is easy for me to look at, right? I don't have to do this awkward thing about trying to focus an object that's really close. Because to my, my eye, thanks to the lenses, it looks like the object is at infinity, and the angle it makes here, right, this is kind of the angular size of it in my field of vision, it's a lot bigger than what we had originally. And this diagram here, this angle here, it's a lot bigger than this. Now, 
exactly where you place your object here, how close do you place, it's going to determine to some extent the magnification um, as well as those lenses. Now, because the exact position of the image changes depending on how close you know, do you put the, the object to the focal point, you have to adjust the distance between the two lenses to make this work out, right? The image gets formed wherever this lens forms the image. It depends on where exactly is this object. You then adjust your eyepiece lens forwards or backwards to uh, make sure that its focal point is right and um, right there. Of course, in reality, you might also change, move the objective lens around a bit to get the image to form in the right spot. Um, but that's why when you work with a microscope, you're constantly sitting there twiddling the knobs trying to get a um, focused image. Right? Unlike with a telescope, the telescope, this setup is fixed. You might have to make adjustments for temperature variations and so on, but, but the focal point doesn't ever change. The focal point of both in that length just stays constant. Here, the focal points are different, and the, you want the second lens to have its focal point at the image of the first, but it's not at the focal point of the first. Right, so it's different. The second part is very similar. And so we look at the amoeba the same way we look at the star. When we look through a microscope, we see it the same kind of image to our eye as if we looked um, at a star through, through a telescope. Um, but it's formed differently because the object is very close. So the same mechanism just won't work. What happens if you use the telescope setup for an object that's very close, well, you can try it, try it out. You can you know, draw the rays. Imagine you take your telescope, just the two lenses, and you put a little object here. What's going to happen? How are you going to see it? Think about it. Interesting little, little puzzle. All right, so that's it for microscopes, your telescopes, microscopes. If you have time, also read about the, the camera, the setup for camera in the textbook. And realistically, you might have... Um, you, you might, for example, increase the path length between those by using mirrors, not just having going a straight line. Same thing with a telescope. You might use um, concave mirrors rather than convex lenses to kind of work the same way and you know, achieve the same effects. Uh, but, but the principle of each one is essentially this kind of setup and the setup you saw um, for, the, for the telescope.